What's up, everybody? Jizz here for jazbeescasebreaks.com. We're giving away 10 Father's Day packs with each spot purchase, guys. Uh, with this 2022 Panini Donners UFC 5 box half base break random divisions number two. So, again, guys, uh, all card ship. Everybody gets a random weight class. Every spot bot gets you 10 packs. So, if you bought two spots, you're going to get 20 packs sent to you. You bought one, 10 packs, three spots, etc. You're going to get some packs, guys. And again, we did the first half. You get one autograph, one memorabilia card, and 60 insert slash parallels with a couple of numbered cards. Here's the dice roller. Here are the customer names. Anthony down to Rowell. And then there's the weight classes there. So let's roll it. Two and a three, five times. Good luck. One, two, three, four, five. Five times. Rowell down to Howard. Five times. One, two, three, four, five. Boom, five times. Men's lightweight down to middleweight. Alright, so Will, you have men's lightweight, Anthony with men's flyweight, Jason B with straw weight plus other all cards not listed, Joseph with men's light heavyweight, Bennett with featherweight slash bandit weight in women's, Peter with featherweight in men's, Mitchell with women's flyweight, uh, Howard with men's bantamweight, Anthony with men's welterweight, Stephen Kendrick with men's heavyweight, and Howard with men's middleweight. So there you go, guys. So, uh... If you guys want to make potential trades, let me know. I think on 22 should be fine. Damn, what's going on? How are you, buddy? Matthew also just got three spots in the next, the next R&B as well. So guys, Matthew wants to do some of that flawless tonight. Anybody else want to do some flawless tonight? Flawless R&B now is down to five left and six left. It's 11 total spots away, guys. Really, Dan? Was that right before everything that happened in the draft? Really? Dang. Time flies, man. <clears throat> Alright. TWC. You think we did well, Dan? Of course we did. I think we did a little too good with the draft and the trade. Now it's just about can they all put it together? Which they will have the opportunity to. But nothing is ever 
Nothing's ever judged by paper. We don't want a repeat of like 2011 or something like that. Alright, good luck, guys. Here we go. So again, this is just like any other Domus product. There's a lot of base cards. And just kind of like in uh, the same little spot, you'll have the inserts and sharp prints, numbered cards, autographs, relics. So we'll kind of quickly skim through those base cards. Forrest Griffin to 49. That's light heavyweight, which is Joseph. Peter Yan. Alexander Volkanovsky. Octagon Royalty. That is a featherweight, which is Peter. Redemption. Who's a redemption in this? John Bones Jones. Conor McGregor. That's number to ninety nine. Production line. Featherweight. Gonna Peter. And a Grant Dawson to twenty five. That is a rated rookie for lightweight going to roll. The helpful hardware, folks. Because he couldn't jump? What do you mean he couldn't jump? <laughs> Clay Guida. Number to 75. It's lightweight. Shevchenko. Adrian Yanis, 10.99. Bantam weight. Numbered here, uh, Sodiq Youssef, featherweight.
Press proof crunch time. Habib Nurmagomedov. Yeah, yeah. He just he just didn't, he had no hops basically to jump. But I guess can you blame him though? Like, was it really too fast for him to react, or he just he just has no hops? See the redemption is. Rated rookie signatures hollow red laser. Laser. Card number 206. Sean Strickland. Alright, so let me pull up the checklist really quick. Sean Strickland is a middleweight. And then Hollow Red Lasers out of 49. So middleweight, that's Howard. Oh, actually, they just put it on right now on MLB Network. Ooh, they're talking about Kalanick not hitting Chad. MLB Network TV is they're saying that if he doesn't hit why do you keep him Is he a lost cause now, Chad? Honestly? Is that how you feel with him? Or is that how Mariner fans feel in general? Well. Like, he shouldn't be in AAA anymore, right? Well, at least Julio's doing well. Three for four tonight. Joanna. There you go. I'm not even going to try to pronounce that last name. And that is uh, going to go to... Strawweight. Which is... Jason. Uh, at our website, jazbeescasebreaks.com. It's pinned below, or it's uh, behind, under this video that you're watching if you're on the desktop. Or here is the link for you to uh, check it out, man. 
what we could potentially probably do next is some flawless. We're trying to fill up some serial number round of number block breaks to help sell out Pikachu number four. That that's getting the closest to be honest. We started at two o'clock, so we started almost what seven hours ago. So we're kind of getting towards the end. Rose Namajunas. We got Francisco Trinaldo. 299 for welterweight. And remember the start of the season, Chad, when they were all offers? I think maybe when Kalanick went down to the AAA, maybe that's when he's just like, finally, I'm away from this guy. He's toxic. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't know. I don't watch Mariners baseball. But that's good, though. Good for the hobby. That's what I'm saying. When did Kalanick get sent down? Because maybe he was just the, the bad juju. Pedro Munoz. To 75 bantamweights. <laughs> exactly, dude. That's what I'm saying. I don't even watch Mariners baseball, and that's what I think it is. Marvel's Nate Diaz number to 99. Nate Diaz. Kyle Lewis was back and he's uh, like he was actually back and then he's out with a concussion. What's going on with that kid, man? Jesus, I know he's had some pretty major knee surgeries, but concussion? What happened? Again, sorry, I don't watch Mariners baseball. Now, how are you out for two months with a concussion, man? That's wild. Full players are out like five days. That's probably why they also have very bad that uh, CT scans. But still. I hit in the shoulder and the next thing I know he's been out with the concussion. <laughs> Yeah, and there's no scheduled break times, Ed. You know, some breakers obviously have scheduled breaks. We don't. Whenever it sells out, it breaks. We also do mini pack fillers, R&B, serial number breaks to help fill up bigger breaks. So, um, yeah. I mean, we've already done quite a few breaks today. Already. Like I said, we're kind of nearing our end of our night. Um, but I'm hoping maybe we can still do some flawless tonight. But, yeah, basically, once it sells out at zero... Or like I said, there's a pack filler or a, like a little R&B serial number break to add on to that. Then it sells out of breaks. But yeah, man. I have two orders that came in. 
Orders for a couple Sterling teams just went off the board. Gary just got three teams in Sterling. So Sterling actually is starting to get pretty close. It's down to 11 now. Maybe that's something we can do if you guys want to try to keep him some more baseball. Sterling. Yeah, we've had a pretty solid day, though. I mean, a couple of these UFC breaks. We did a Gold Rush, Absolute, Hip Parade, Mystery Crate. Still looking for maybe another one or two more breaks tonight. Love to do some flawless. Imagine we can end off the night with some flawless and some uh, and some uh, Sterling baseball. That'd be that'd be really nice. That's what I'm saying, Chad. That's, that's exactly what I'm saying. Like how how could it how could it be out for so long? It's either that or like that's why football players have like major problems down the road football players and like basketball players especially football players obviously do they just endure so much poundage like on their body like for the for like 10 straight years or something like that you know and then that's it so i feel like baseball players i mean they, they, they play a lot of games don't get me wrong but i mean there's times where Outfielders, any position really, besides maybe catcher and pitcher, is where like you're kind of just standing out there right in the outfield, waiting for a ball to come your way. I mean, either that or they're just not telling us more, Chad. Right? They're keeping their injuries under wraps, making it seem like it wasn't a big deal, but it has been, obviously. Brock Lesnar to 99 press proof retro series. That is a heavyweight. I'm going to Stephen Kendrick. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Chris Daukas. Autograph. Heavyweight again, Stephen Kendrick. Henry, Kajuda, Bantamweight. Yeah, no, that's true. It's kind of like any NHL. For NHL hockey, like, if a player is injured, they don't specifically tell you what it is. They'll just call it an upper body injury or lower body. I think it's more to protect the players out there because, you know, obviously it's a very physical game. So if they know something's wrong, right, like he has an ankle injury, they're like, well, let's, you know, try to mess with his ankles or something, you know. But, like, that's the most frustrating part, too, because sometimes it's pretty obvious when, when a hockey player gets injured what it could be. But when they say lower body, you're just like, well, shit, it could be anything. Jessica Andrade, little relic, flyweight, going to Anthony. I don't remember what they said he was injured for, but he's still out too. Yeah, it's not like for baseball they're going to be like, let's hit the ball to his ankles. <laughs> Dominic Cruz. Let's, let's throw a pitch to his shoulder. Alright, DJ, have a good night, man. Sorry.
Jennifer Maya, flyweights. Yeah, let's um, let's message that doctor on uh, on uh, on Twitter that always uh, I mean it doesn't mainly for football, but he always actually anybody that sends him a message or like quotes him, telling him why do baseball like we'll just ask him a question the pro football doc we'll just ask him why are baseball injuries take so much longer to heal than football injuries and see what he says. He replies back to like everything. I remember even when like Justin Bieber announced that he had like some type of syndrome, he even announced like he even like broke his syndrome down. I was like, damn. Yeah, that pro football doc used to be like the Chargers like lead doc team docker for like so long. But then he got like fired. And then he just never was a team doctor again, but he like dedicates to like breaking down and helping out like athletes with their with their obviously injuries and stuff, and then he just like breaks down injuries on Twitter. He has like a whole website and everything too. But um I remember he's like responsible for like helping get Phillip Rivers like ready enough. To play like that AFC Championship game with a torn ACL. Then again, I felt like there was some scandal with him, too. Yeah. So, okay, well, I get it, though. Maybe initially before they actually went in for surgery or something, they said it was going to take two or three months. But I remember, like, certain players, obviously, you know, sometimes it takes longer because, like, they don't heal fast enough. Like, I remember there's some people, like, you know, like, Alex Smith is, like, crazy gruesome injury. I get it was gruesome and it was going to take some time. But, like, it was even prolonged even more because, like, he was getting a bunch of, like, you know, blood clots, he was getting, you know, infections and this and that. And I feel like that's also what happened to Zion, too, with his foot. I just felt like that he wasn't healing right. They had to go back in and, like, redo it again and, you know, infections. And it's just, like, crazy because I guess that's what could also happen, too. But if they never tell us, then it's like we think that they just lied to us in the sense that, like, why would you say only two months when it's taking more than a year? To 99, lightweights, Habib and Conor McGregor to 99. But the fact is that you said he came back four games, hit two home runs, and then got in the shoulder and had a concussion. So it's like, this kid is great, but he just can't stay healthy, right? He's just so fragile. He's like made a glass like AD. So I remember he was rookie of the year. I'm just thinking it never healed correctly is what I'm trying to say. Billy uh, Quarantilo. And that is a number to 25 rated rookie. Dang, that looks nice. Featherweights. Peter Ng. <laughs> He's worse. Lewis is on his own. Denning. 75 featherweights. And numbered here of Dominic Reyes to 25. Going to light heavyweights. And that's Joseph. Straight up bubble boy or what? <laughs> it's so sad like when you have football players or any sport athletes like that. It's like whenever the ball gets hit to them or catches the ball or when he drops back for a pass in football, dribbles the ball. You just, 
you have like PTSD, right? You're just like, oh, please, 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 don't get injured, don't get injured. I just remember that. I remember I felt like that with like Carson Wentz, you know, after that major surgery after his uh, second year. It's like anytime he got knocked down on the floor, you know, was running the ball, I was like, please don't, I was like, please don't get injured. <laughs> Your eye favor. Bantamweight. Going to Howard. Uriah Hall to 49. Middleweights. Quinn Howard. I know, I know, but I'm just saying, though. That's probably how you feel, but just like how you just said it right now. He's just standing on first base. Or he gets a hit, and you see him rounding first to go to second. You're just like, please, don't get injured. Mariners fans, man. You guys have a rough. What did you guys do to deserve this, chat? Were you guys just blessed to have, like... You know, Ken Griffey, A-Rod, Edgar, all those guys, you know, Randy, like all those guys in one era, like, that was it. What did you guys do to deserve this, chat? Actually, I was actually just thinking that I was like, man, I don't even think they won a World Series with those players. So fuck. Wasn't it was it exciting to watch them play though? ended up going to the World Series with the Diamondbacks though, right? A-Rod probably didn't get his success in World Series wise until the Yankees. Unless it was like Texas. No, Chad, I didn't even know. I was just trying to think, like, where did all these other players win their rings? And I know A-Rod obviously had to be, like, Yankees. I know Randy had to be probably Diamondbacks, but... Like, what was the farthest they went? Like, did they at least go to, like, you know... To the NLCS, at least? Or ALCS? Jens, Pulver. A little old school right there. And I have the checklist pulled up right here.
Uh, that's a lightweight. Going to Rowell. ALCS. Two times. Well, imagine me, Chad, being a, a young buck and seeing the Eagles go to four straight NFC Championship games and finally go to the Super Bowl and then they lose to Tom Brady. You know how, how much that hurt? 04 was supposed to be our year. I was so sad when I was a kid. And then, then they go like four years later in 2008, Deshaun Jackson's rookie year, and they somehow come back and actually are beating the Arizona Cardinals. And I'm thinking, oh my God, it's going to be a Steelers Eagles Super Bowl, Dominique Cruz. But too much time left, and they just ran out the clock for the Cardinals, and then that's it, they win. <sighs> well, yeah, like 20 years later, but still, like, man. That's exactly how I felt, probably. It will happen, Chad. You guys will win one day. Can't tell you one, though, but one day. Andre Olofsky. Heavyweight. Steven Kendrick. It's just so funny, though, because, like, when people talk about rings, like... If you're going to talk about all championships, then Eagles technically have, like, four rings. They won, like, three NF uh, NFL championships. Francis Ngannou, but Super Bowls, when they turned them into the Super Bowls in the 70s, well, yeah, they never won a Super Bowl, but... I was like, it was just so funny how people always argue that. Like, oh, they ain't got no rings. I'm like, I don't know, dude. Technically, we got, like, three. We have number to 10. Wow, production line. Middleweight, Desanya. Exactly, but OKC still claims that ring, so technically in their franchise history, they have one. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, And don't even bring up OKC, all right? Man, we had a loose with LeBron his first year. He had to win game one of the finals and be like, damn, we're going to win this series. And then we lose. That sucked as well in 2012. That Thunder team was so good, man. They were so good. They were just like too young. Yes, Chad, I told you this. You may not respect me, but when I had to choose a team to hate on my sister's Lakers, I chose the Sonics. It was like Ray Allen, you know, the glove. So when they moved to, to OKC, I just followed them. I have no ties to Seattle. I just love the colors they had. So I, I'm not a bandwagoner. I chose to just stay with them. Nothing wrong with that. For you guys in Seattle, of course, you guys can hate them. But nothing wrong with what I did. Alright, so there you go. Let's give away some, uh, some Father's Day packs, though. Remember, I only also liked them, too, because they were Oregon Ducks colors. Which I'm sure you love Sonics being those colors. Alright, let's switch scenes. And again, guys, uh, everybody will get a shot. Or sorry, actually, sorry. No, we don't have to give away any. Everybody's getting some. Sorry, I thought this break actually had a giveaway of giving some to only some people. But actually, everybody gets Father's Day packs, guys. So appreciate it. This was break number two. Uh, I'm messaging Nick right now. See if I can post up three and four. But if not, like I said, that was just our last one here. So appreciate it, guys. Jaspiescasebreaks.com.